please rise for the reading of St. Matthew, the first chapter. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. We read together, or, yeah, together by whole verse. Let a righteous man strike me, it is a kindness. Let him rebuke me, it is oil for my head. Let my head not refuse it. Yet my prayer is continually against their evil deeds. When their judges are thrown over the cliff, then they shall hear my words, for they are pleasant. As one plows and breaks up the earth, so shall our bones be scattered at the mouth of Sheol. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will rise up for David a righteous branch. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell secure. Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For how could there be peace on the earth unless truth has arisen from the earth? That is, unless Christ were born of the flesh. And he is our peace, who made the two into one, that we might be men of goodwill. goodwill sweetly linked in the bond of unity. Those are the words from St. Augustine's great homily on Christmas Day. We'll come back to that. There's something that I think that we should go over because it's something that's largely missed in churches all around the world. And it's something that's missed in, in our church, in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, as well as Augustana Lutheran Church. Remember, we can only get more and more wisdom and more and more catechesis and more and more hungry for the Word of God. So when I say it's something that's been missing at Augustana, it's not, it's not a, a condemnation or to say that we've missed over something or we haven't paid attention. That's not what I'm saying. In fact, I would think that many, if not most, Christian congregations do not observe this. I'm talking of the great O Antiphons. You may look at me like, what is an antiphon? Well, we've been doing that for longer than you probably know. 
During our chanted psalmody each and every Sunday, the antiphon is the last bit that I chant after the Gloria. We did it today, we do it every single Sunday. That's what an antiphon is. The great O antiphons are something that we really need to put into practice, I need to put into practice for myself and for Augustana Lutheran Church. I'm going to read to you some and see if we can pick it up. On December the 17th, we sing this O Antiphon, O Wisdom proceeding from the mouth of the Most High, pervading and permeating all creation, mightily ordering all things. Come and teach us the way of prudence. Does anyone see where we're heading yet? If not, that's okay. December the 18th. O Adonai, the ruler of the house of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the burning bush and gave him the law on Mount Sinai, come with an outstretched arm and redeem us. December the 19th, O root of Jesse, standing as an ensign before the peoples, before whom all kings were mute, who, to whom the nations will do homage, come quickly to deliver us. December the 20th, O key of David, the scepter of the house of Israel, you open and no one can close. You close and no one can open. Come and rescue the prisoners who are in darkness and shadow of death. December the 21st, O day spring, splendor of light everlasting, come enlighten those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. December the 22nd, O king of nations, the ruler they have longed for, the cornerstone uniting all people, come and save us all whom you have formed out of clay. December the 23rd, O Emmanuel, our King and our Lord, the anointed for the nations and their Savior, come and save us, O Lord our God. In case you haven't picked it up yet, the last one is really the one that, really, that, that sticks out to us. O Emmanuel, our King and our Lord, or to put it in terms that we know, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns the lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. When we put it in that, the O antiphons have really been practiced every single year. But I believe that as we approach these days, we would put into practice the O antiphons, praying them together, praying them at home, praying them with our families, and saying, because, because each one of these O antiphons points to Jesus. It points to Him who would break the darkness and it, 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 all it does is it simply names the attribute of Christ. O Wisdom, O Adonai, or Lord, O Root of Jesse, O Key of David, O Dayspring, O King, O Emmanuel. All, it, it, all that it does is it names who we are speaking to, Christ, the attribute of Christ, proceeding from the mouth of the Most High, pervade, pervading and permeating all creatures mightily, ordering all things. Ruler of the house of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the burning bush and gave him the law on Mount Sinai. Oh, standing in, as the ensign before the peoples, before whom all kings are mute, 
to all whom the nations will do homage, the scepter of the house of Israel. You open and no one can close. You close and no one can open. Splendor of light everlasting. Come and enlighten those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. The ruler they have longed for, the cornerstone uniting all people. Our King and our Lord, the, uh, the anointed for the nations and their Savior. So there's the attribute. And then we have the petition, that is the prayer. Come and teach us the way of prudence. Come with an outstretched arm and redeem us. Quick, come quickly to deliver us. Come and rescue the prisoners who are in darkness and in the shadow of death. Come and lighten those who sit in the darkness and in the shadow of death. Come and save us all whom you formed out of clay. Clay. Come and save us, O Lord, our God. In other words, these are collect prayers. We pray them every single Sunday. They have all of the makings of a collect prayer. And so we should be praying these things. Each Advent, we should be praying. We should be looking forward to them as we come upon the some version of all these prayers. If you'll notice, the, la the uh, December the 23rd is placed in the mouths of the first stanza and it's just repeated over and over. If you can open your hymnal to page 357, you will see on the opposite side of the page exactly what I preached to you. I did not preach anything, but those who are smarter than me and those who are better than me and those who have many, many years to perfect these things. You find the sermon written out in front of you. I want you to look at December the 17th only while I sing to you these words. O come thou wisdom from on high, who orderest all things mightily. To us the path of knowledge show and teach us in her ways to go. December the 18th. O come, thou Lord of might, who to thy tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times did, did give us the law. In, cloudy, in cloud and majesty in all. December the 19th. O come thou branch of Jesse's tree, free them from Satan's tyranny that trust thy mighty power to save and give them victory over the grave. December the 20th. O come thou key of David come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high and close the path of misery. December the 20th. O come thou key of David come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high and close, and close the path of misery. December the 21st. O come thou day spring splendor, O come thou day spring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. December the 22nd. O come desire of nations bind, in one the heart of all mankind. Bid thou our sad division cease and be thyself our king of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. If we can sing that for Israel, so is it true that we can pray this for Augustana Evangelical Lutheran Church. May we pray this 
as the days come, in home, in heart, in house, and in the sanctuary of Christ here at Augustana. And so to ask, to ask the question and then answer it, for how could there be peace on earth unless truth has arisen from the earth? That is, unless Christ were born into the flesh and he is our peace who made the two into one, that we might be men of goodwill, sweetly linked by the bond of unity. Or we could put it this way, for how could there be peace on earth unless truth has arisen from the earth? That is, unless Christ were born to the flesh and we can answer, O oh, wisdom, O oh, Adonai, O oh, root of Jesse, O oh, key of David, O oh, day spring, O oh, king, O oh, Emmanuel, our king and our Lord, anoint the nations for the Savior is coming to save us all. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.